Well, here we go. After over a year, suddenly on a Monday afternoon or early morning for those of you stateside, 343 decided to show off the campaign gameplay for Halo Infinite. Make no mistake, a lot was riding on this moment. Halo Infinite's initial reveal was very controversial, and this gameplay trailer needed to address a few things. The reception has been mostly very positive though, with some concerns raised in certain areas. This is not a source video, it's a serious one because I want to talk to you about Halo Infinite and its campaign overview. I want to share my thoughts on it for those of you who care enough to listen and hopefully we can have a healthy discussion regarding it. Was the campaign overview for Halo Infinite good enough to redeem 343's first gameplay showing? Well, let's talk about it. Firstly, we have to talk about the visuals in the game. This was the primary bone of contention when Halo Infinite's gameplay was first revealed. It was the fact that the visuals did not hold up to the expectations of gamers for a flagship title to a next-gen game. 343's 2018 tech demo for the Slip Space Engine did not do the game any favours. But what a difference a year can make. Halo Infinite looks much sharper, more detailed and refined with better lighting despite the lack of ray tracing on release. My good friend Colt Eastwood released a brilliant video comparing last year's gameplay footage to the latest one. You can check that out in the description below. The character models look much sharper than what we saw. Craig has got a significant upgrade with some facial animations to boot this time. The environments are the real visual standout in this game though. Halo has always prided itself with its amazing skyboxes. And this is the case here, but the terrain is what is immediately noticeable. Whether they be natural formations or forerunner structures contrasting against the mountains and trees that surround them. Texture quality appears to have improved significantly from what we saw last year. There is less popping that is immediately noticeable, despite the abundance of things taking place on screen. Halo Infinite is being carried heavily by the incredible art style that it benefits from, and it just screams Halo, more than any Halo in my opinion since Combat Evolved. I think the game looks great, especially for a cross-gen title. Gameplay is the most important factor of all in a game, and Halo Infinite's gameplay, to me, always looks stellar, even in its controversial first reveal. However, with a more substantial showing this time round, many onlookers have been stunned by what 343 has seemingly achieved here. The scale of this game is incredible, open world or semi-open world, however you describe it, for what was shown, this is a Halo game that offers player freedom like we have not seen in the franchise before, all in a Halo sandbox that, to me, looks very special. Now, there are some concerns here. People have drawn comparisons with titles like Far Cry, alluding to the open world formula Ubisoft regularly deploys and relies on, that many, including myself, have grown tired of. This formula increases the longevity of a game by littering a series of side quests and objectives on a map, but not necessarily enhancing the quality of the narrative or advancing it in any meaningful way. However, whilst I understand the concerns and the burden is on 343 to prove that these concerns are unfounded, what I witnessed in the gameplay shown was alluding to something more special. It may seem like an odd thing to compare this to Zelda Breath of the Wild, but its open world game seems alive because of the manner in which its systems and unique gameplay mechanics interacted with the world that was crafted. Similarly, Halo Infinite's open world and gameplay mechanics on observation remind me of that kind of natural blending of systems 
within a well-realized Zeta Halo. Halo is a game unlike any other as far as how lofty its standards are, or to be more precise, the standards that fans expect it to achieve. You would think that a good multiplayer experience, good gameplay, and good visuals would be enough. But no, the past Halo games set such a high standard that more and more is demanded from its sequels. And for Halo Infinite to be successful, in the eyes of the many, it needs to get the story right, and that is in a big part due to the failure of Halo 5 in this department. There are still some question marks here. What happened to the Forerunners? Is the Didact really dead? What is Cortana doing? Will the Banished be the main enemy throughout the game? What about the Flood? Will we even get a conclusive story in the campaign if this is a game as a service? Past Halos have suffered critically owing to their cliffhangers. And I don't think Halo Infinite can afford that. Somehow, 343 have to satisfy fans with a conclusive story campaign while still leaving enough to fulfill its plan to support Halo Infinite for the next decade. This is the tricky part, and I have some concerns. The premise may give 343 a lot of potential to rectify the problems of the previous Halo whilst offering its scope to deliver something special. But from the characters and the dialogue I've witnessed in the trailers, I find myself straining to be engrossed by what has been shown. I'm hoping there are surprises in the game. In fact, I think the game needs to have them for the story to be successful. I barely slept when it was announced past midnight on a Monday that the campaign gameplay for Halo Infinite was going to be revealed. For me, this is one of the most important gaming franchises in existence, and it's because of my passionate stance on it that I approach Halo very critically. Perhaps more critically than others may understand or feel is appropriate. I don't care. Halo has attained reverence in the gaming world, and rightfully so. But in order to maintain its legacy, I believe Halo Infinite cannot have excuses made for it. Halo Infinite has to do right by the seminal franchise. I will maintain what I've always said though. Halo Infinite looks like it could be the best Halo game we have ever had the pleasure of experiencing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is something I do not say lightly. It isn't long before we finally get to play what could be the ultimate Halo experience. This is it now. <laughs> we are nearly at the finishing line. This is 343's best and final chance to do right by the franchise that made Xbox what it is today.